Boom. Thank you. I uh, appreciate it. Thank you, Jenny. You want me to reintroduce myself? Please. <laughs> okay. Uh, thanks uh, so much for setting up this meeting, uh, Vice Mayor. Uh, hi, Bill. My name is Virginia Diamond, and I'm the head of the Northern Virginia Labor Federation, which is the uh, the organization of all of the labor unions in uh, in uh, Northern Virginia. And um, our goals are primarily to um, you know work with the, all the variety of workers to um, provide opportunities to um, you know get into the middle class, particularly uh, you know economic and racial justice is what we what we focused on. Awesome, and and um, thank you, Vice Mayor, for making this connection. I appreciate it uh, as always. And um, Bill, great to great to meet with you here. Heard a lot of great things about you. Um, I'm Greg Ackerman. Not sure who's telling you that. <laughs> All over D diversity of, of, of sources. Um, so I'm with the um, the DC Metro Building Trades. So I'm the, the North, I cover Northern Virginia, um, and so we have 17 construction trade unions within our council. Um, you know, electricians, plumbers, uh, I'm at the painters union hall right now, um, you know, in a number of construction trade unions, we uh, invest around $30 million a year in apprenticeship and workforce development, which we make, you know, available to um, all of our members completely free. And, and it's actually earn as you learn um, four year or five year apprenticeships, depending on on the trade. So, um, you know, same stated goal as, as the Northern Virginia Labor Council. And, and we, you know, work with both our members and with our contractors to, uh, to, to, you know, guarantee that, work to guarantee that construction remains a good middle-class job for, um, for, for local residents, so. All right. And as, as the vice mayor said, I'm Bill Ashton. I'm the town manager of the town of Herndon. Um, I'm responsible for all operations uh, related to uh, to the town. Uh, our little small $37 million municipal corporation we have floating around here. Uh, that said, I work for the mayor and council and, um, and um, just can't wait to hear what you all have to say. Awesome, well, well thanks for taking the time. We really appreciate it. Um, just to kind of give you just an overview of, of kind of what we're about and what we're looking to do. Um, so, so like I mentioned, um, you know, we, we represent workers. Um, we also operate as, you know, educational institutions where we have training centers that are conducted in partnership with our contractors um, that train um, workers in all aspects of the trade. Um, and so, you know, we are able to provide all of these uh, types of workforce development opportunities for local residents free of charge, um, you know, earn as you learn, and most of it is uh, on the job training. Um, and uh, we're looking to expand those opportunities and bring as many people as we can into our apprenticeship programs. Um, you know, just uh, the, the, the kind of existential issue that we have both in the construction industry and with workforce development is that, you know, most of our training is on the job. Um, and so oftentimes, you know, we've seen over the last 30 or so years, um, just this, uh, this constant tearing out and subbing out of work to oftentimes, you know, unscrupulous subcontractors that pay workers under the table, don't pay them overtime, they misclassify them as independent contractors. This is an issue that's gotten a lot of press coverage across the country, but I think in the Northern Virginia area for a variety of factors is, is uh, pretty much as bad as it can get. And so we've made a lot of progress at the state level. Um, passing some laws that give localities uh, a lot more leeway to fight this issue, as well as giving workers um, a lot more opportunities and options to uh, recoup their wages. Um, but, you know, due to how widespread of an issue this is in the region, uh, it's still incredibly, incredibly hard to fight. And oftentimes, once it happens on a job site, it's really hard to fix. Um, so, you know, we want to work with you and, and, and other, you know, constituency groups to, to, to prevent this issue and fight this issue. But that's really what we, we're, 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 we're trying to come to, to you with is, is, you know, how can we fight this issue of wage theft and misclassification in the construction industry by working with end users and working with developers to put in policies and procedures in place um, that, that, that prevent these types of uh, bad actors and bad actions from happening. That's fair. Um, what, what exactly in particular has been effectuated at the state? I know some of it, but could you help color that for me a little bit more? Certainly. So there, there have been um, items related to public procurement. Um, so I'll start with those. So um, there was a, a, a bill that repealed the state's ban on project labor agreements. 
Um, so project labor agreements are um, uh, are uh, pre-hire agreements between unions and contractors. And uh, you know, previously the the state and local governments were not able to require PLAs as a condition of an RFP um, or as a condition of the sale of land or a public-private partnership. Um, and now, you know, as of May 2021, um, you know, local governments can require PLAs, and, and PLAs are are good frameworks to ensure that um, you know wage theft is prevented against, and and all the rules are set so that uh, bad actors don't find their find their ways onto jobs. Um, in addition, there was the Prevailing Wage Act, which allows local governments to um, opt in and. and with the Prevailing Wage Act. Yeah. So. Um, so those are those are the items dealing with public procurement. There have also been bills that allow workers to, you know, sue their employers for wage theft. Previously, workers couldn't even sue an employer if they were not paid, you know, overtime or or, or misclassified. I mean, they could they could use the federal course of action, but that's that's always challenging. Um, and you know, workers are now able to sue their general contractor uh, if they work for a subcontractor. So there, there's all sorts of um, you know legal remedies now that that were previously unavailable. That latter is probably a pretty powerful tool because it kind of puts the GCs on notice. Yeah, yeah, no, it is, it is, it's been really great. Um, uh, but, but I think it goes to show that, um, you know, despite the fact that we have this liability, GCs still find it profitable mm -hmm. to hire subs that are, that are, um, you know, unscrupulous because so much of the wage theft happens and, you know, the underground economy where undocumented workers feel uh, like they can't come forward. So there's always going to be a lot of workers that 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 don't pursue um, you know collective action for for one reason or another. Um, so that's why we really think it's important that um, end users and developers are engaged uh, and work with their GCs to prevent this th these issues. That's fair. And and Bill, real quick, I'll just interject. There, there's some synergy here with okay. with another initiative. Um, in terms of our population, we have a lot of day laborers uh, in the town. Yes, we do. And this opens up an opportunity to have some skills training, potentially, uh, some protections, and address what hasn't been addressed in like 15 years, right? There's an entire segment of our population that has just gone unserved, underserved, and quite frankly, unnoticed. And I think this is a potential uh, position to solution for addressing that long term. So this is why when, when I started to think about this, this is kind of where I'm going with this, right? I mean, I think we have a potential foundation here to address some of those uh, laborers requirements going forward. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I just wanted to interject there, Greg. No, and I agree. I, since this this town had a day, a a day labor conversation, unfortunately, the last one we had was was the only good benefit that came out of it is it gave me a lot of papers in my master's program. So, oh, and I wrote, wrote extensively on it in my master's program because I was living it here. But but everything else that fell out from that was was certainly negative. Um, so you're absolutely right. It gives, there is an opportunity, potentially an opportunity here for something positive to emerge, uh, from that question. Um, have we, have you talked to the County at all on any of this? Because the, the, I'm just, I'm just, is a, my mind is spinning about going on with the vice mayor just asked about, um, partnerships and being able to put, you know, get more resources to bear than we can possibly gen up ourselves and trying to pull additional resources in from the state or the County to, to get this done. Is there any been any, any overtures to the county? Absolutely. Yeah. So. Um, okay. Yeah. Right. So 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 I, I mean I can say you know we worked uh, just specifically Carol we worked very closely with Walter Alcorn um, and generally just big fans of his guy I really appreciate his his background in planning and economic development so he kind of understands both sides of this. Um, but but I think the thing that we're most excited about in Fairfax County is actually some of the work we've done with Supervisor Alcorn uh, to uh, you know include some of the um, some components of workforce development and uh, fair wages in the comprehensive plan for Herndon Reston. 
Um, so I guess the idea is that, you know, as developers ask for, you know, greater density and, um, you know, confluence of, of other, you know, potential items um, that they, we would consider, you know, good paying construction jobs with worker protections as, you know, a potential community benefit. So I think we're, we're, we're really intent on, on working with Supervisor Alcorn on, on that. And we've, we're happy where progress has been for the Herndon Rest and Comprehensive Plan. Um, you know, we're also working with the county on prevailing wage and, and PLA ordinances. Um, so they're, they're making progress on that. And also um, as public private partnerships come up or, you know, sales of land or, um, you know, potentially economic development deals come up. Uh, we're getting connected to developers uh, by the county in, you know, the initial early stages of, of projects. Um, so, you know, all of those things, that's 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 kind of right. where good progress has been with, with Fair Fair County. Yeah. So, so as I look at this potential, potential opportunities as we move forward, um, we will be undertaking a comprehensive plan update probably in the next, we'd have to get back to it probably probably in the next year, because we're due under state code. Um, so if this is somewhere that we, we need to dig more deeply into what the county has been able to do in the rest and Herndon area plan, um, if to try to model some of the things that they've done here, uh, we can certainly look at that. Uh, the prevailing wage we're already watching. We are watching the county. Um, one of the things that is a, that having been the IT director here and then the town manager here, um, I learned very early on that we don't want to be the first kid in our block to own anything. You know, let some other big actors flush out the risks, flush out the issues, flush out the best practices, get to a better place. I'm not saying be the last kid on block to own it, but, you know, but the first kid on the block brings a lot of risk with it. So uh, so we are watching closely what's happening at the county to see what's going on there, to see if there's a chance to model something that, that, they're, that they're pursuing. Um, I have my economic development manager actually watching the, P, the prevailing wage discussions as they move forward. And, I, and I'm sure it's companioned that as the PLA discussions. Um, so we, this is something we are, that we are, it's on, on the radar screen. It's just, let, we just want to see somebody else flush out all the details. So, Bill, uh, we, we can certainly get, we can double click on this before our next strategic planning session. Mm -hmm. um, but I always believe fortune favors the bold. I agree. And I think yeah. taking a leadership position um, is, this, this issue has gone unaddressed a long time. So, um, I'm, uh, full disclosure, I'm, I'm pushing this. And I'll, I'll have the backing when needed. So, but thank you for that insight. I, I understand, but like, like I said, while, while, while we're getting our act together, let uh, anybody that has the model set up, let them kind of get out in front of us a little bit. That, that's the advice I'd give you. I agree with you for favors the bold. I'm a big fan, but when a $37 million municipal corporation or a $2 billion corporation up the street, let the $2 billion kind of flush out some of the issues is what I would suggest. And then we, we can, we could be right behind them, but, um, and, and I think we could still be in a very bold place. Um, I go back to some of the technologies I brought in here. My teacher director, we weren't the first, but we certainly acknowledge because we want let these things flush themselves out elsewhere and learn from the mistakes of others and then then we're able to uh, put in a better product but ultimately it's going to be a count you're you're absolutely right council decision my advice would be to monitor and then well and we can run it in parallel do some of the things that we're doing to prepare while we see how they flush it out i know the county's looking to do correct me if i'm wrong but the county's looking to do a a pilot is that how they're starting out with the pla or, i'm sorry prevailing wage, looking to do a prevailing wage pilot. Someone would love to see the uh, results of the pilot. Yeah, so they're doing a, oh, sorry, Jenny. Well, I, tell me if I get the wrong answer here, but they're going to adopt prevailing wage. It's, it's right. just going to, it's going to be adopted. It's not going to be a pilot. Uh, the, I think the word pilot might've come up with the fact that they were going to select a few project labor agreements to, to begin with so that they uh, that they they and their staff learn exactly, you know, the best way. So they're going to take a big one, a little one, a medium one. And but uh, I, I can assure you that Fairfax County is not dragging its feet there. We're very engaged. Uh, Greg can can be more specific. 
No, yeah, Jenny, Jenny, Jenny right. sums it up so, very well. So just to, just to let you know from the town. Okay, good. Um, so, so I'd be very interested to see what they've, they've, a majority of the projects we currently do have federal money involved. So Davis Bacon's already at play. We already have, we already have the federal requirements that the uh, contractors we bring have to, have to, to uh, uh, abide by. Um, so huddle compared to the county has a very deep pool. Um, so just, just, just letting you know, now that said, is there room in the puddle? Sure. Uh, that's something we can certainly look at, but, um, I'm very interested to see what, how, how this plays out at the county. Yeah, no. And, and, and we're, we're happy to, to provide updates as kind of, as they come out, but we're, um, it looks oh, like there's going to be a final vote, um, on, in January. So we're, we're, we're excited for implementation. I, I think just, just for, for, for our purposes here, um, you know, you know, first of all, we did, we did want to flag, and I, I think we sent it to, to, to the vice mayor as well, but, um, you know, the, this issue of wage theft misclassification, it has popped up on certain public works projects. Um, there's, there's coverage. There's a, a case yesterday that was uh, where a, a contractor in, in Richmond working on the General Assembly building uh, mm -hmm. pled guilty to, uh, to wage theft as felony counts, which is, is unbelievable in the symbolism of that. Um, but we actually, um, there were, we, we, we helped some workers file a lawsuit against a contractor performing work on Herndon High School. Um, yeah. So there was, a, there was a settlement, I believe, last year uh, for, for multiple counts of, of wage theft against a, a subcontractor that was performing work on uh, on Herndon High School. Remind me, who did you see on Herndon High School? I'm, I was, I'm drawing a blank. Clark? Is it Clark? I think it was Clark. Yeah, I, I think so. I, I, we'll, we'll get back to you and we'll send you the, the, the lawsuit as well. But it was, uh, it was the subcontract was called Circle Group. Um, and, and so I think just for our purposes, um, I think we are interested, obviously prevailing wage, we think that would be a really great initiative. Um, I think for, 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 just from a purely utilitarian perspective, how do we prevent wage theft to the greatest extent? I think we're interested in the in obviously the public works projects, but also private development opportunities, particularly those where um, you know the town has a hand in in um, you know either it's public land or um, if there's you know some sort of incentive or money, because uh, I think those provide the greatest opportunities where um, where we can really dig in and prevent wage theft and, and change potentially even some private sector behavior. And Greg, if you could uh, officially send that to both the town manager and I, email that to our uh, our government uh, emails, uh, we'll make that part of the record as well. Yeah, I, I, I don't think that, I mean, the project concept of a private project labor agreement is is really the same as a- I'm so, sorry, that broke, you broke up on my end. Okay, yeah, this is a little, not a great signal. Um, I was just hey, going to say, Bill, could you turn off your camera uh, yeah, from where I'm sitting? Yeah, I was just reaching for my mouse. Okay. Oh, there we go. I, I, um, should I turn off mine also? I think you're okay. Okay. You know, you, you, I think it's, you, it's, it's you, totally, you, I think it's partially on my end. Like I said, yeah. I was having some internet issues earlier this morning. And then when I went to get on the Zoom, they bubbled up again. And I jumped on another network. And I think it's just the bandwidth is giving me a little unstable. Yeah, you're you're good now, but I, I you're good. Thanks, Bill. Go ahead, Jenny. So put it back up because I didn't hear half of what was just said um, in the past minute or two. So, oh, uh, Greg, do you want to repeat what you were saying about? Oh, I was just I was just saying that you know we'll 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 send you the lawsuit um, and and the settlement and everything and, and okay, all great. the details of the project. Um, but um, I, I think we're, we're, we're most interested in um, looking for opportunities in the private sector and private development, um, as well as, you know, as well as public procurement, really focusing on uh, where opportunities are in, in Herndon, uh, where potentially the, the town has, um, you know, has a role in the development project to, to, to work with the developer um, and, and GC to do, to do a, a, a project labor agreement. Yeah, and I was just gonna, yeah, I was following up on that to say that, you know, the concept of a project labor agreement, especially in, you know, what you're talking about, maybe some private development is simply the matter of considering community benefits 
uh, when approving and when supporting projects, projects when interacting, interacting with, with, with private developers, so that not only do we avoid wage theft, uh, but we, which is really, really hard and, and important, uh, but also that we we're offering um, the possibility that we could build into it some some on the job training for local residents. We particularly work with with underserved communities, uh, returning citizens, immigrants. Uh, and so um, just as I think whenever there's development being considered, the, the impact on the community is a factor. And so this is just sort of uh, a, a different kind of vehicle uh, to to look at that in a holistic way. And um, it's very, very, very common. And it actually doesn't require union contractors. It just requires, you know, certain uh, workforce standards and certain you know, community benefits, local hiring, preferences for minority contractors, things like that, that is really customized by the locality based on your community's values. It doesn't, doesn't really add cost per se, uh, but it's structured in a way that um, makes the, the project meaningful, not just to the shareholders of that particular corporation, but to the community where it's, where it's being constructed. Okay. There. Okay, Bill's having internet connections. No, I, um, I, I, I hear you all. I hear okay. you. All. I got you. Okay. I was just writing. Okay. No, no worries. I couldn't see you right, but thanks. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I, I think we day scheduled. Day. I, I think we scheduled this. I think it was for an hour, but um, we're coming up on the the half hour. If we don't need the full hour, great. But um, just want to. Be mindful of everyone's time. Mm -hmm. Well, I think to, to this point, you all have given us a great deal to think about. And certainly, um, as the vice mayor said, this is something that's on near and dear to his heart and something on his mind. If it's any consolation, my father was a union member, was a steel worker up in Pittsburgh back when I was real young. So this is not a... Uh, he ultimately became a police officer in D.C. That's that's why I ended up down here. Um, so uh, this is certainly something that, that resonates with me as well. Uh, so uh, I would imagine our steps forward would be to, to have conversations with uh, the vice mayor and members of council, especially going into the next initiatives meeting to see if there's anything we can fashion around Bill, you still there? Yes, I would certainly, as we identify. Can, can't you hear me? Um, I was just going to say this is something we can certainly uh, bring up at our at your next initiatives meeting. I can get it on, on the uh, moderator's radar screen, and we can certainly elaborate it uh, there. Again, being something strategic, and we can build off, off of, that would be, um, I think, probably the direction we would need to go. Uh, yeah, I'd like you know if you're comfortable with it. Just give a briefing. I want to I want to have full disclosure on this uh, at the next work session. Certainly, feel free to report on it. Um, but uh, I certainly like it to be part of uh, that next uh, planning session. Um, when, sure. when would that be? Absolutely. When when is that coming up? Just so we kind of do our homework. So the next work session is the first week of January, Bill, is it? Yes. Um, first, so first, first Tuesday of January. January is the next count based on leave and holidays and people in and out. But uh, certainly um, we could develop this over, over time. And then the next strategic planning session is targeted for March. Yeah. That's going to depend on moderator. Yeah, uh, yeah, we will absolutely have a moderator. So <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh, we will absolutely. That's one thing you and I are definitely in agreement on. We will absolutely have a moderator for the next. Month. Absolutely. So, um, Ginny and Greg, again, I want to be mindful of your time. Um, Anything else priority item for the town manager? I just I, I want to uh, say we're, we're really appreciative of this dialogue and we really hope that we can continue. Um, I you know, we, we have so much we, we see so much wage theft in our industry every day that it's sometimes it's hard for us to 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 stop at, you know, we, we know that there's, you know, an achievable goal kind of 
in the future here with uh, with hopefully future economic initiatives. Um, I, I I think part of what kind of initiated this conversation was the you know the Herndon Town Center redevelopment um, and you know some of the the projects there, and, and that's how we kind of got connected with Supervisor Alcorn flagging this wage theft issue. Um, you know, just just so y'all are aware. Uh, the general contractor for that project, James James G. Davis cor, uh, Construction, um, that's mm -hmm. a general contractor that that also has a number of wage theft complaints. Um, not just complaints, but you know, active evidence. We have there's a number of lawsuits uh, that have been settled um, and, uh, and and cases both in Reston and Herndon, but also in in other jurisdictions. Um, and uh, and we also are aware of a number of Comstock development projects that have had. Um, you know, active wage theft cases. Um, there was a project at the Reston Station site improvements where Comstock was using a electrical subcontractor that the DC Attorney General, um, you know, sued for two point seven five million dollars. It was a it was a recent back pay decision. So uh, these types of issues they're not uh, they're not conceptual, right? They are they are here. They're happening. Um, and so actually, one of the things we were actually potentially hoping to, to have a, uh, a conversation about was you know, the, 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 the town center redevelopment. Um, we think it might be an, a good opportunity to engage uh, Comstock and um, Davis uh, to, to discuss, you know, what we can do now. I know that the, a lot of the paperwork has already been drawn, that project's been um, in the works for a really long time, but, uh, you know, to the extent that, uh, that uh, there are still opportunities to engage them and that they're, that hopefully probably is not their last project in Herndon. Um, we think uh, that would be a great test case just because, the actors associated with the project do have such a troubling history. Well, can I pause for a second? You said that the electrical contractor to Davis on Comstock's project in Reston was cited in DC, but were they cite was anything out of the rep? Did anything happen at the Reston project that was overseen by Comstock? No, so yeah, no. So so sorry. Yeah, <laughs> there's so many ways that complaints everywhere but um right, no right. so I'm so this, trying to get a, this right in my mind I, I'm just trying to put it in order I'm sorry yeah. no no yeah so so it's a Reston Reston station site project um mm -hmm. Davis is the general contractor right. uh comp uh the subcontractor is a contractor called power design power mm -hmm. design is a national electrical subcontractor they right. were uh there was recent settlement for 2.75 million dollars with the DC attorney general you know, previous to May 2020, there was no ability for, you know, any kind of either prosecutorial authority or, um, um, you know, civil action against the subcontractor because of a lack of uh, lack of laws on the books. So power design was doing all the wage theft in Northern Virginia, but they got caught in DC. Um, so it is, it's telling when they are being used. They're, they basically are like, okay, well, we can't do this in DC anymore. We're gonna come down to Reston, um, and and we're gonna we're gonna make money there. So they have an active wage theft case on the Reston development. There, there it's that, not. It's not, circle. I think you're talking about cir the circle. No, no. Cir circle group. Circle group was the contractor where there was an active wage theft case in Herndon on the Herndon High School project. All right. All right. That's good. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And that was um, that's a Clark project with the county. Correct, um, but right. there's there's no active wage theft case in on the Reston site. It's simply a project where a, the contractor that is being utilized is a known unscrupulous subcontractor. Okay, so it's a known unscrupulous subcontractor that Davis employed for a comps project. But we have no evidence of anything happening on that on that sub, right? Correct. Just, before I go back at Comstock with this and try to get more information, I just I I want to know, you know, I, I don't want to be embarrassed stepping no. out and, and then them going, that, that's not happening. And no, I, being I, able to show that. I, I don't want to, we you can see what I'm saying? I, I want to make sure my yeah. ducks are in order before I have a conversation. Well, we, we would like to, to get you that information in writing, but also I think really what would, would be most helpful at some point mm -hmm. is that we would be able to, that, that you all would facilitate us being in the room to have these conversations. Uh, we have a, you know, um, we have, um, you know, we have concerns that we would like to address to pre to preempt this kind of thing from happening. And mm -hmm. uh, if we can be in in the room and having discussions with developers, uh, I, I think that would be the 
the, the most effective way to, to sort of start that conversation rather than, um, you know, uh, back and forth kind of. Okay. So is that your ask to be in the room? That's, that's, that's would be it. Yes. Be in the room. And then uh, hopefully we can all, you know, mutually find a win-win situation that prevents a wage theft. I mean, you, I think you probably read about what happened at the general assembly uh, where there was just, you know, volumes of, of uh, evidence of wage theft, the attorney general uh, you know, le levied criminal charges against, you know, the subcontractor there. I mean, it's, it's something that we deal with every day. And, and uh, just the fact that there isn't a lawsuit uh, at, on one minute, you know, once we you know, send investigators in there, we will, we will detect it if there's not, you know, kind of labor standards built into place. And what would trigger an investigator going in there? Well, when, I say, when I say investigator, I mean, it's often it falls upon us as union people, as our organizers going there, talking to the workers and say, hey, do you happen to get paid overtime? And they'll go, no. <laughs> you know, and that's pretty common. Are you getting workers comp? No. So um, that we, we're the ones that have to help the workers build their lawsuits. It's not, okay. it, it's, it's laborious, uh, but we, we find it so, it's so ubiquitous that, you know, the fact that there hasn't been a lawsuit filed yet, you know, if we were to divert our resources, we could go file one tomorrow, probably. <laughs> okay. Um, just again, excuse my ignorance on this, please. I, I, I'm starting to wade into new ground for me. Um, so I'm going to ask a lot of dumb questions. So please, please. No, no, we, we appreciate the engagement. Uh, what would be the Department of Labor? No, no, no. Thank you. Um, what would be the Department of Labor and Industries role in this out of the state? Because I'll tell you what, they, they have been nothing short of, um, uh, very draconian with us related to COVID related mandates over the course of the past, uh, couple of years and they've been very actively engaged and drop doing drop-ins and and those things what would be dolly's role in all of this so 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 dolly does run the virginia osha program and that's where you're encountering them uh they're also okay. response they're also responsible for receiving wage theft complaints uh but okay. they're very understaffed as far as that goes they don't investigate wage theft they they adjudicate uh, administratively complaints that workers file and um, uh, mostly mo most of the time it's it's preferable for a worker to just get a lawyer and go to court because uh, the, uh, right. the Dolly process in that regard is is pretty um, uh, unimpressive in the sense that there's no penalties you know there's no you know that it's it's just not they're over they're understaffed would be the main reason right right now it'd be interesting that, that I was wondering because again it sounds like your investigators line up the civil complaints for this and that that's wonderful to make uh, to make you know victims of this whole it would be certainly a, a lot of a goal but part of it would be to um take out sanctions on the company at a very legal level because one one of the things i know at least in my world when we do contracting here in town um we have one right now that, that we're having some problems with and we're looking to to, to disbar them from ever bidding on town projects again, but the bar to this bar is so so high, the documentation bar is pretty significant, and we're working on that right now. But um, there's uh, nothing that I'm aware of in the private sector that would keep an unscrupulous sub, even if the general contractor is in the best intentions. How would they know that this sub is unscrupulous without anything coming from some sort of governmental sanction? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think that's where uh, that's where internal labor standards come in, um, and that's where PLAs come in. Uh, so those are two separate things. But with a PLA, uh, the unions actually have the enforcement authority to, you know, adjudicate um, certain disputes on a job. Um, and oftentimes, uh, both PLAs and kind of internal labor standards include uh, standards such as responsible bidder criteria where contractors have to certify that they have been in compliance with, you know, all federal, state, and local uh, laws relating to wage and hour and OSHA um, for the past three years. And so you have, uh, you know, grounds to uh, either through a PLA or through internal labor standards, you have grounds to disqualify 
uh, contractors because you know even though uh, for example let's say uh, like a comp stock if they decide that um, you know they, there's nothing legally binding them to say oh well we we we're we're not going to hire contractors that have had wage theft complaints in the past three years um, but if they adopt a set of standards that they you know uh, they they say that they're going to abide by then. Um, you know, that's that's a good start. And it does um, inoculate against bad actors from being on a job. But to your point, you know, it, we, we could we could find lawsuits, we could get workers to file civil complaints or go through Dolly. Um, but a lot of the times that's like playing whack-a-mole. I mean, you know, we can't view this as like a just a construction market issue. It goes all the way up to the end user. And that's that's why we want to be in the room with the developer. And that, and also too, there's the element, and I've seen this before, not necessarily in this regard, where you get a, a vendor out there that just repackages themselves, renames themselves, same players are involved, and it's a new vendor that pops up in the, in the mix. So, um, but they're the same players, just a different team, um, let's say. Um, not to mention too, you get managers that jump from job to job, vendor to vendor, and they take their, their issues with them. Um, you talked about internal labor standards, and I'm assuming that's the, the GC or the developer standards and their contracts with their GC and the GC with the subs. Like what, what kind of standards would those include? Yeah, so we can, we can send you what Amazon adopted and for HQ2, which is actually a, a great, we, we think a really great set of labor standards. They actually adopted it because there was a whole report of wage theft on their projects. But, um, you know, it, it's a couple of things. Uh, one of it is prevailing wages. Uh, so, you know, GC has to pay, you know, every, every contractor at every tier has to pay uh, prevailing wages. Um, you know, the, the, the big thing that we emphasize is this uh, concept of direct hire or, you know, just essentially no contractor can hire an independent contractor uh, for the job site without approval by the end user. Um, so no independent contractors on the job site unless it's a very, very specific purpose. Um, yeah. That's the other big thing. Apprenticeship requirements, um, you know, all contractors have to be parts of a part of a registered apprenticeship program. Um, and then um, usually there's some sort of local hire goals component, but but we can send you like a comprehensive list of labor standards. Yeah, I'd love to see that. Yeah. You didn't expect us to say Amazon has a great set of labor standards, did you? Well, um, on this they do. <laughs> Let's put it that way. Um, some some of the other things I read about, I'm not so sure. Okay. Uh, the Arlington. Yeah, if you again, all these. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, I was just going to give credit to the Arlington Board for encouraging Amazon when they were going to build their HQ2. They were very insistent uh, that they have labor standards, and we now have Arlington residents from low income communities doing union apprenticeships with Carpenters Union on the job at HQ2 and everybody's being paid prevailing wages and there's no wage theft. So it, it can be done and, and with a little bit of uh, encouragement uh, <clears throat> from you know, the local government, um, it's, it's definitely very, very workable and it is a win-win because the work gets done better as well. Right. And, and Bill, again, I, I just got to chime in here. I get so excited when I hear and think and envision the apprenticeship mm -hmm. possibilities here, right? Especially for the residents that uh, you know we're we're talking about here in the Herndon area. So, no, oh, absolutely. I, this absolutely. is why I get like real like jazzed up about this. So, and I and I can understand that very much. Um, all right, very good. Now, I, I'd love to have this stuff. You can send this stuff to me. That'd be great. I'd love to take some time and and delve into it a little more deeply. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, I think what would be great, Bill, again, for that first work session next year, December, uh, to capture the feedback and, and kind of hear what council's thinking, if there's any questions on that. But um, make make no mistake, I, I am driving this. I, I think this is yeah. a absolutely worthy, worthy cause to, to get going here. So. So um, you and I could talk offline about the, the work session itself and how you envision that discussion to occur. Um, and so and I, I suggest we do that because I don't think I personally, I'm not going to be ready to have a discussion in, in three weeks, um, but, uh, well, just this, just disclosing that we have this discussion. Oh, oh, okay. oh, oh, that, perfectly fine. That's yeah. wonderful. Yeah. yeah. Good. Yeah. I can have and, again, yeah. and I'll, I'll make the recording available 
uh, to anyone that wants to see here and okay. delve into it. Okay. Jenny or Greg, anything else? Just um, I'm really looking forward to working with you, Bill. And, uh, you know, we really appreciate this is always, you know, like a, sort of a novel thing. People don't really understand the, the depths of the underground economy and the black market and construction and really appreciate your, your openness uh, and interest. And uh, we are, you know, real excited to work with you, uh, with the vice mayor, with the whole um, board to um, to do some, some great things in Herndon. I think we can help the help the people that you're talking about. Indeed. And uh, just I want to just thank the group of you for putting up with my schedule over the past couple of weeks. It's been kind of crazy and trying to fit this in and shoehorn it into a time. And and uh, I really appreciate your patience in, in having that uh, in having this discussion. So uh, thank you very, very much. Yeah, did, did know what Jenny said, and thank thank you to the vice mayor too. I mean, uh, you've been uh, I know you've been an advocate for this issue for a long time, and we're we're really excited to work with you and with with Bill and, and the rest of the council, the mayor to 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 really um to really put an end to this issue. So seriously, yeah. thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah, and uh, however we can accelerate addressing it or resolving it, uh, I'm I'm all on board. So uh, thank you again, everyone, for the time. Uh, Bill, I know we'll talk soon, and Jenny. And Greg, we will certainly talk soon. I'd like to do another sync up call if necessary. Um, hopefully before the holidays, if not, have a great rest of the holidays and a happy Absolutely. new year. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Yeah, Thank and have so a great much. weekend, meanwhile. Uh, yeah. Be well. Happy right. holiday. Take care. Bye now. Bye bye.